Hey everyone, happy day 11, almost halfway through the whiskey advent journey this year. Um, I am thrilled to be joined again by Dave Worthington from that boutique whiskey company to talk Welcome. about our day 11 dram, which is the Spayburn 10 year old batch number three. Um, like, a bad, whiskey, like a bad penny, I keep turning up. You do keep turning up and we appreciate that. And uh, I also have to say, we're looking at this. I think you told me before we started filming that this might be your favorite Spayburn. It's got a nice color to it. Um, and it has, I have to say, a somewhat busy label to it. And I look forward to learning the story to this one because I'm sure there's a story behind it. There's lots of stories. Yeah, lots of stories behind this label. Um, but look at the yeah. beach in this too. Nice viscosity to it. This is just beautiful. This is. I know it's a little. It was always a little bit pricey for us over here. Um, a little bit more expensive than than your standard stuff. But I have tasted this alongside other Spayburns, and I seriously think this is the best one. It's just beautiful. Uh, it is our third batch. It's a ten year old. Um, it's a batting of a number of casks uh, and bottled at forty nine point five percent. Now, Spayburn's got an interesting history. It started its operation in 1897, which was the year of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Now, so keen were they to fill a cask marked with distilled in 1897 that the stills ran at the very end of December before the doors and the windows were even in place. There was snow blowing in through the holes as they were as they were distilling this and uh, just one single butt was filled with spirit on that day but they did achieve their 1897 car so that was that's the, the story of the start of this distillery um today it's owned by uh Inverhouse and don't see an awful lot of it over here certainly in the UK you don't see an awful lot of it but it is one of those um Scottish distilleries that have retained their worm tub, although their wash stills still use shell and tube condensers. Now, like most worm tub distilleries, this method of condensing produces a deliberately sulfy, sulfury new make, which changes in the cast to reveal that sort of singular, delicate, fragrant character which lies underneath. And this one really does come alive in the glass. It's just so buttery and creamy, and ah, I just love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a nice nuttiness to it too. And as you're saying, like you can get a little bit of that subtly meaty character coming through on the nose as well too. You really don't see a lot of this over here. Um, I mean, they, try, they, they have started to bring it back, but it's not sort of one of those malts that you see over the, in the UK a lot. So in recent years, Spayburn really has been marketed as a value for money malt in the US. Uh, so large, large volumes going into the... USA, but the price point really hasn't helped that whiskey's reputation. Yeah, the uh, the palette on this is beautiful. It's very creamy, very fruity. Um, I'm getting lots of apricots, peaches, maybe even moving into some melon tones on the palette as well. It still has that nuttiness and a little bit of a of a meaty profile, but it is just lovely. Right. Let me see if I can remember the label story here i'll just share this one it is a cracking label now queen victoria diamond jubilee 1897 we wanted to go in with sort of a victorian sort of one of those posters that that has all those stories on it the most magnificent it really is really building up that um victorian now we've got the salmon on there which i really love the the, the salmon in tweed with the little monocle uh, the salmon is the emblem on their own bottlings uh so we wanted the salmon on there but it is quite simply the very finest single malt scotch the world has ever had the privilege I and mean, it's all about those victorian claims if you look at any of those old ads from that time uh, never smoother, none better. All of those, those, yeah, is, is a play on that Victorian. And then there's the salmon cannon. Uh, did we mention the salmon cannon on here? We don't mention the salmon cannon. Splendiferous. I thought we did mention it, but there is, um, there's a salmon cannon. It's always talked about the salmon cannon of, of the spade. And then there's two sort of stories um with with um spayburn of, of the salmon cannon. On, obviously, it's on the on the river spay and and the, the fish ladder. Um, 
let me I can't I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look at this I can't remember this off the top of my head oh, I'm oh. sorry about that um no David well, while you're looking for that I I mean I've heard of the salmon cannon before and I mean certainly that's no different than it is here in Canada with fish ladders I mean we obviously have salmon here as well too and other fish that sometimes need to get around obstacles and uh sometimes you have to get creative finding ways for said fish to to overcome obstacles in their path I and yeah the the, the two really the two of them because yes this used to be one of DCL's distillery and they used to be a flora and fauna 10 year old which was you know 20 pound a bottle but now it's obscure and it's gone up to thousands of pounds for collectors. And there's also another story about um, the distillery was closed during the Second World War and it was home to two Scottish artillery regiments. So uh, I don't know if that's something to do with it as well. There was also a little story about some whiskey going missing while these artillery regiments were there. That, that's not, that doesn't sound too surprising, but I certainly hope they weren't <laughs> taking artillery practice on the salmon because that wouldn't seem very sporting. This is really fruity, isn't it, on the nose? It is. You know, Dave, of all the ones that we had uh, from the Boutique Whiskey Company, I was probably most nervous about this one because, as you said, it, it was a little bit on the pricey side for, for uh, a 10-year-old single malt. But the palate, the nose, the nose is really coming alive now with some marmalade and honey. And the, the palate is just packed with fruit. I just love, love, I can, this is just what I call gluggable. It's a session whiskey. I just adore it. And say so I put it up against the standards, their, their, their standard bottlings, and it is head and shoulders above it. Mm -hmm. I, I really do love it. Well, I think Spayburn has started to turn a bit of a quarter. As you said, it may not be targeted um, as much in the UK, um, but they did rebrand. I think they now have a 10, 15 and 18 I actually think the 10, and I'm sorry, my uh, my companion here is uh, freshly in from the, the frigid outdoors and nibbling at my hand. Um, I don't, you can kind of see him out of the corner of the screen here. Um, but I, I've been happy with, with the range. The problem is the brand is going from practically nowhere and has to start over. And huh. that's not an easy thing to do. Um, we were lucky we bottled a cask about three, four years ago of Spayburn. And it was one of those ones where we were nervous about taking the whole cask. And in the end, I have big regrets about it because it was this lush, creamy, fruity 15-year-old, not too dissimilar from this one in terms of style. Um, and, you know, it sold out very quickly and we were filled with regret for not taking the whole thing in the end. Uh, but I think it's a malt that's got a lot of promise. And uh, yeah, I will <laughs> we'll wait to see as it progresses. <laughs> But Dave, I think we have to cut this video short because yep. I'm getting attacked by a Walter and uh, the Walter needs to be uh, settled down a little bit. So I'm going to thank you for uh, recording this session with us. Um, and we'll, we've got a, at least one more, possibly two, you never know, uh, coming out in the days ahead. But Dave, thank you again for joining us and uh, have a great night. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Cheers. And cheers, 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 Walter. Walter says good night, everybody. <laughs> he needs a little walk, I think. Oh, oh he's had one, but ah. he's waiting for playtime at 5 p.m. at the park with his mates. Anyway, bye, Walter.